different kinds of truth. That is going to be the topic of this episode of Chi Life. So I think this one's going to be an interesting one to talk about. It's, um, it's an interesting one for me to examine for myself, actually, as well, and to sort of reflect on a bit. Because I'd say, you know, I, I guess I became aware of this quite some time ago in terms of my own internal motivations, that one of my most fundamental, possibly the most fundamental motivator, highest values I have, is simply truth. Seeking out truth, being truthful, and that shapes a lot of what I choose to do, what I choose not to do, and how I choose to do things, because that is, yeah, that is what I'm, I'm striving for. It's just it's something that's so inherently valuable to me. Um, and actually, I'd say that's a big part of why I'm so fascinated by Qigong and have devoted so much of my life to it. Because it is a, a method um, or a type of practice, certainly, that for me has helped me to discover a lot more truth. And so that then comes to perhaps, okay, what do I mean by different kinds of truth? As I mentioned in the introduction to this vlog, I'm guessing most, if not all of you, have, have um, come across and interacted with people with, with quite different definitions of truth. And sometimes this can lead to a lot of conflict where someone thinks of truth one way and someone else thinks of it a, ver a very different way. And so I'm going to try to explore at least a few of those different types of truth that's probably not going to be exhaustive because this is the thing, there can, I think, actually be many types of truth. Um, but yeah, explore a few of these and, and possibly reconcile them, hopefully, a little bit because I think that's a really valuable thing in our lives to be able to rec recognize different types of truth, actually for us, because we may have more than one type of truth just for ourselves, and to recognize and maybe even acknowledge the validity of other people's ideas about truth as well. And it can lead to much more harmony. I think if we do that, doesn't mean, it certainly doesn't mean we're always going to agree. <laughs> Definitely not. But we can have a lot more respect and understanding for each other and, and that can lead to more harmony. So one type of truth is the very concrete, hard, physical truth. I think this one's it's really important. It's pretty fundamental, you know. Is this a rock that I'm sitting on or is it, I don't know, a cake? <laughs> Have you seen those little videos where people make things to look like something and they cut into it's actually a cake? I'm not going to do that in this video. Uh, but, you know, these very fundamental, you know, is... Um, yeah, just very physical, physical things. Did someone physically do something or did they not do it? Did an action actually take place or not? You know, it's, it, in many ways, that's a physical truth. And I think it, it's, it's to some extent always important to be able to come back to that. Okay, what is the physical reality? This is what really grounds us. It's a really important fundamental aspect of truth. But then out of that comes other different types of truth, or um, you could even think of them as layers of truth. Because what do those physical realities mean? And often that will come down to perspectives, people coming from different perspectives. A classic one being, uh, you've probably seen a meme of this or something, S someone's drawn a numeral, so with a line and a little circle at the bottom of it, right? And there's someone standing on one end of it, someone standing on the other end of it, and one person saying it's six and the other person saying it's nine. They're both objectively true in terms of what the physical reality of that shape is and what it's you know, generally symbolically connected to, the number either six or nine, just one's flips upside down. So they're not wrong in a sense, 
but then there can be a sense where one of them's wrong where it can come down then further to if the intent of why this shape was drawn is then known and the context around that that can make it clear whether it, it is actually representing a six or a nine but just purely looking at those objective facts of like this is the shape who's to say which way up it goes they're both correct but digging deeper can actually find like okay yeah we've got a physical reality let's dig a little bit deeper let's understand some context and that's going to help us understand it uh, better even when we dig deeper into context uh, it, we, there may still be things where there's a, you know, a physical objective reality and truth where we still end up in disagreement. And, but if we dig deeper, we can actually frame what the disagreement is. So we can then understand like, ah, actually we do disagree on, oh, sorry, we do agree on aspects of this truth, but we then start to recognize, well, what is our different perspective on this and why, why do we see it differently? So a classic one for this is air conditioning in office buildings. For those of you who've worked in an office, um, particularly large offices, often the air conditioning is not set up in a way that it can distribute the heat efficiently and effectively to different parts of the building. And so people sitting next to the windows with the sun streaming in, they're gonna say, with the air conditioning set a, set a certain way, it's too hot. People who are further into the building where it's more shadowed, they're gonna say it's too cold. Um, other, uh, other, other people, there's often quite a difference between males and females, uh, and that females generally like the temperature to be warmer while as males like it to be cooler, and so they'll say, oh, it's too hot, it's too cold, depending on their perspective. Now, there's often not going to be a single objective, there's a one correct answer to this, like, because from some people's perspective, it will be too hot for them or too hot for where they are in the building. But if we dig a little bit deeper, we look more widely, we can understand, okay, we can understand the perspective where they're coming from and why they perceive it that way. And, and disagreement may continue, but at least we understand each other. We understand why and you know, there may not be an ultimate you know optimum solution for it but we can maybe find a way to be more harmonious in how we interact with it and maybe find better solutions by understanding each other's perspectives so these are a couple of uh really simple examples of this and you know this applies to so many different things where we're coming from different perspectives um and and, and we're going to interpret things very differently going further than this a little bit more nuanced well maybe a lot more nuanced getting into um, different types of interactions between people. We often don't realize just how much our culture has shaped the way we perceive things in, in very deep ways that seem, well, we, we don't, again, we don't even realize it. It's so deep that we just think like, of course, that's just how it is. If someone else does something differently from me, they must have a certain intent that may not be their intent at all, or they must have, you know, be, yeah, be intending a certain thing or, or, or so on, where actually they just have a, a very different cultural uh, idea about different types of actions and interactions and, and what they mean. And so if one of the big challenges with that is in so many ways, often our culture is invisible to us. We don't realize the assumptions that we're operating on. And so we think our truth is the truth not realizing that, hey, yeah, there, there is gonna be an objective physical truth, you know, did someone physically do something or not? But what did that mean? That truth may be very, very different depending on those different perspectives. And this is one of the really good things about uh, interacting with different cultures, maybe traveling and, you know, really experiencing how people behave and how they think about things in, in different places. Um, one, in terms of just helping us to understand people in general more, to be more ex uh, accepting and to uh, be able to observe without too quickly judging and, and, and so on. And, and two, it can also then, well, it can make us start to make us more aware of at least some of our cultural assumptions, probably not all of them. You know, culture goes so deep, we're probably never necessarily going to have a full, you know, self-awareness of all of the assumptions that we make, uh, but at least of, of some of them.
and you know and that's great in terms of self-knowledge and and experiencing different cultures can then actually help to loosen some of our ideas help to give us new ways of thinking new ways of acting uh, new ways of perceiving our interaction and and that can open us up, open us up to a much healthier more balanced freer way of living as well so really really good things that come from that another type of truth not necessarily culture, but again, it, it's about different perspectives, is emotional truth. And this is something where it's, it's a classic uh, one where often it can lead to disagreement between males and females. Because in general, now, remembering, there's always a distribution curve of, you know, some males are, you know, more to one end and of, of a curve and you know down the other and others and females you know we're not all the same and you know there'll be some males who are more like a certain characteristic than females and others you know it crosses over so um but in general males tend to be much more objectively minded in terms of focused on that physical reality of truth that tends to be you know the things you know structures um, whereas females tend to be much more focused on feeling and emotion. Now again at crossovers you can have very emotional males who that's their main thing, you can have very logical factual females, but overall these are you know, some broad categorizations that on average there tends to be a, you know, a, a bit of a difference. And, and sometimes yeah, this can lead to a lot of disagreement because you know, uh, a, a male will look at a situation and say well this is what happened, and I, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Whereas a female might be going, yeah, but it made me feel this way, and therefore it's wrong, therefore it's bad. <laughs> Possibly. Well, it could be the other way, it could be good too, but you know, very different perceptions of a situation. And again, that's where, well, at least understanding this, and again, it's not just males and females, you could have a very emotional male, logical female, but it's helpful to be able to understand um, these different Again, there are different types of truth because our perception and how it makes us feel is, is a real thing. You know, those emotions are real things. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's coming from something that is less subjective, but it, it's something that, you know, once, once the emotion has occurred, that is, that is a real thing. And, and to be able to understand that and acknowledge that can then again, it can dig into some of the deeper context behind things and to be able to understand, you know, for a female to understand, okay, for the, or not necessarily female, for someone who's very emotional to be able to understand someone who thinks about things very logically, very factual, very, you know, physical reality to go like, okay, that's how they're looking at it. Um, and so saying that they're wrong or, you know, or things like that where, you know, on an objective level they're right, is probably not going to be, you know, or that what they're saying is not true or, you know, is probably not going to be the most constructive way to have understanding and to create harmony. Um, but, you know, actually being able to acknowledge, hey, yes, that is true, what you're saying is true, and... I have this emotional experience of that. It has affected me in this way. And this is, you know, an aspect of my truth. Yeah, okay. Now we can start to communicate well. Uh, and vice versa too, for someone who's very logical, to say someone who expresses an emotion and say, that's not true, you know, that's not right. Hmm. Again, maybe not all that great of a way to actually come to understanding. But to be able to acknowledge, and, and look, and there's a bit of this that needs to come from both sides, for the person who's emotional to acknowledge that what they're expressing and experiences is, is emotional. It's not the same as the pure hard facts. And for the other person, what they're focusing on is pure hard facts, but it might not be taking into, effect, into account all of the context around those emotions and things like that. And it, when both acknowledge this, then like, ah, okay. Now we can communicate more effectively. We may still not agree, but we can at least acknowledge each other um, and, and a much greater chance that, yeah, the person who's logical might be able to understand some of that context around the emotion a bit more. The person who's emotional might be able to understand the other perspective and, and, and why the objective truth of you know, what happened is, is really important and that doesn't invalidate their emotional response either. Yeah? Okay, one more. 
And again, some of these uh, types of truth, it's not necessarily that they're completely different types of truth. In many ways, they're maybe layers of truth. In some ways, you could even say there's also, uh, and I don't use this word a lot, <laughs> you'll know this from previous vlogs and so on, but you could say there's a sort of spiritual truth. Um, which I guess in my mind and the way I think about that word is things that go to a deeper level of meaning and importance beyond all of the other ways we have of describing things. So beyond actually physical <laughs> reality in a sense, beyond just the physicality of what's there, beyond culture, beyond emotion, beyond thoughts or ideas, sometimes there's something even deeper than that. There's like this deeper type of truth. And sometimes we can have, you know, often this is a very personal thing in terms of people's own experience of what's very deeply true for them in their spiritual reality. And in a sense, again, I'd say it's not that we necessarily actually have separate different spiritual realities. We're all living in one reality, but we might have a very different interaction with that, different ideas about that. Um, and so that can be a, a whole nother layer of truth. Often for many people, this might be um, tied up with religion and things like that, and that's how they you know, they interpret some of their spiritual truth. And that can be really, really important to them and a really key thing for them. Um, yeah, and it's really important to be able to understand that about people's perspectives and, you know, what drives them, what motivates them. For other people, their idea of these spiritual truths may not be connected to religion, but it's to something else. It's their, again, it's their deeper connection with, with the reality of life, with meaning, with purpose, with the universe. And there's something deeper that you can connect to and sometimes you get interesting insights and understandings and so on. And at different points, different people will be ready to um, become aware of or, or take in or understand different parts of these deeper insights and understanding. And there's absolutely no point in trying to force someone to understand or acknowledge um, some type of spiritual insight or understanding that they're not ready for. Maybe something that you have perceived, some insight you've had. Um, so, you, you know, sometimes it's just for you. Sometimes it can be good for sharing with specific people, you know, people who are ready for it, um, that'll benefit from it. And, 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 and often, you know, and often that's it. Sometimes it might be something to spread more widely, but often it's about our personal perception and understanding, but that's very deep as well. All right, so all these different types of truth, um, I think they're all important, you know, from the physical reality to the cultural to the emotional to the, well, just uh, perceptual in terms of just on physical reality, sometimes different perspectives, and then right down to that more spiritual level. They're all important. They're all worth really trying to understand as fully as we can. And um, when we do that, um, we come closer to finding our true selves, our true essence, and being true to that, allowing ourselves to express ourselves and, and be ourselves more fully when we do that. And we also come closer to having greater harmony with all the people around us. Okay, hopefully that's been another interesting one. I look forward to seeing you in another one soon.